In this video, we're going to talk about Canadian designated learning institutions and I'm going to show you exactly how to find them. Hi Angels, welcome back to Accord TV and if you're new here, my name is Accord but most importantly, what I feel you should know is that here at Accord TV, we only vibe on positive vibes only and I'm super excited that you're here and I'm grateful and thankful that you have actually clicked on this video and you're actually watching me right now. Hi! <laughs> Anyways, like mentioned earlier, we are going to talk about Canadian designated institutions and i will of course show you step by step on how you can find one all by yourself now for those who are new to a court tv youtube channel or you have just decided you want to immigrate to canada as a student then it is highly advisable that you enroll yourself into a designated learning institution canadian designated learning institution and what does that mean that means that there are learning institutions in canada like universities and colleges some are designated some are not designated and some are not even canadian so if your plan is to go to canada study and then go back to your country then of course it doesn't matter which institution you enroll yourself into but if you're planning to go to canada as a student and become a permanent resident and eventually a canadian then you are highly advised to go to a designated learning institution and get your certifications from there so studying in a designated learning institution in canada simply means that if you take a degree course let's say for four years then after your studies you'll be eligible to apply for a postgraduate work permit which will allow you to work in canada for two years and within that time then you can use your experience and your certification to apply for permanent residency but like mentioned earlier if you are not intending to move to canada as a student and stay there like just keep and leave there then you can feel free to join any learning institution and study and then go back and develop your own country. All right, so if you join a designated learning institution and then your course is, let's say, just one year, then it means that you'll be eligible to apply for a postgraduate work permit, which will only keep you in Canada for one year. Or if you do a course which will take four years, then you'll be eligible for a postgraduate work permit, which will again keep you in Canada for two long years. But remember that within that period, you can apply to become a permanent resident and eventually a Canadian citizen. But what you probably need to note is that if your course is less than eight months like you take a certification course which only runs for six months or below eight months then you will not be eligible for a postgraduate work permit you'll just study and then once you're done pack your things and go back home or fall in love and get married to a canadian as fast or as quickly as it is possible okay but again if you ask me even if your initial plan to move to canada is just to go and study and then move back to your country you never know one year down the line two years down the line you may end up making friends and then just become very comfortable in canada and then decide you know to just stay on apply for permanent residency and just stay on so i would really really encourage you that even if you are not planning to stay in canada after your studies you never know what may happen once you're in canada so just try or rather consider to enroll yourself into a canadian designated learning institution and i'm going to show you step by step on how to identify one okay so having said all that the main purpose of this video was to show you how to find the designated learning institutions in canada and make sure you enroll into one of them okay let me not say make sure if you want to all right if you want to move to canada as a student then enroll in one of them one thing i would really like you to be mindful of is when i'm showing you how to find the designated learning institutions you need to pay like super close attention because even if someone else will be helping you there are agents outside there who help students to go study in Canada who helps students to get admissions into universities and let me tell you what if you're an agent and then you're helping students to go study in Canada these people will make a lot more money if they get you to register into an institution which is not designated and mostly private universities in Canada and then after your studies you're stuck you cannot apply for a postgraduate work permit and then you're forced to go back home so I'm just saying for the purposes of learning get to understand how to find those designated learning institutions so in future or in the most near future if someone 
decides to help you to get or to, if someone decides to help you enroll into an institution they will come and give you a proposal and tell you hey i've gotten this university i think you should enroll into it then you should do your due diligence and go back into the system and check if the institution they are encouraging you to enroll into is a designated one so just don't go into it like blindly you need to be in a position so you need to be capable to just go back into the system and check and confirm if that institution is actually designated and i'm not sure if i've told you what a designated learning institution means a designated learning institution is a school approved by a provincial or territorial government to host international students but if you're going to a high school or a primary school then all high schools and all primary schools are designated in canada Again, one important thing is you could enroll yourself into a designated learning institution and then you travel to Canada and then you start studying. Then unfortunately, that institution loses its status as a designated learning institution. So what happens? If that happens, then continue learning in that institution until your study permit expires. And then you can renew your study permit, but only if you registered yourself in a designated institution. That means that by the time you are registering yourself, in this particular institution it was designated at the time and then it lost its designated learning institution status while you're already in the system so if that happens you are allowed to renew your so if that happens you are allowed to renew your study permit after the one you're holding expires and again remember that having graduated from a designated learning institution does not give you an instant guarantee that you're going to be eligible for a postgraduate work permit there are still rules and regulations that you must follow and i'm going to put up links for those videos in the description box down below so after you're done watching this you can make a reference to those ones again because of the pandemic because of what is currently happening there are some designated learning institutions which are not allowed to open for international students and there are those which are currently allowed to open for international students so you need to please know the difference during this pandemic you have to know even after getting your designated learning institution you have decided you're going to study in this particular university you still need to go and check if your university your designated learning institution is listed amongst those universities which are currently allowed to open for international students and what does that mean that means that those institutions have been approved okay and they have a working system to control rona which is currently happening so they have places they can put students to quarantine and you know they're just ready, their classrooms, everything is in place and they are capable of taking and receiving international students. So even after getting your DLI, you still have to check if that institution of yours, the one you have selected, is allowed to welcome international students. So a lot going on, but when you follow protocols and do things the right way, and there should be no any problem whatsoever. So now, angels, I'm going to show you step by step how you can get your designated learning institutions, or if you have one already, how you can actually confirm that indeed it is a designated learning institution. And you also need to find out if the institution you have chosen is in the list of those approved to take international students currently and especially because of what is happening around the pandemic okay so now i'm going to share my screen with you angel so we can see step by step how this thing works so don't worry once you're done watching this video you can go down into the description box and check out the link which i'm going to share with you and that is the link you're going to use to access this particular website and just check and find your way through okay all right so let's get into it okay and before i forget if you're getting value out of this video please give the video a thumbs up comment share if you have not subscribed please consider subscribing and turn on the notification bell so as soon as i upload a new video you are instantly and probably the first one to be notified that hey a code has uploaded <laughs> all right very quickly let's get into this so angels the first thing you'll do when you are looking for your designated learning institution you'll come to this website like i've mentioned i'm going to share the link with you guys down below in the description box below then you can just click on the link so the first thing you need to decide on is which province you want to go and study into there are about 
12 provinces in Canada, if I'm not wrong. So decide which province you want to go to. So how do you decide? You can just go Google and check the advantages and disadvantages of settling in any province in Canada. So for instance, if you like British Columbia or if you prefer going to study in British Columbia. So the next thing you want to do is come here onto this website and then you will type the name of the province so this says view the list by province or territory so let's say we are thinking about british columbia we'll just come and click over there the drop down i hope my net works well and then we look for british columbia there we go we click on it and it brings us here and the next thing we can say is view list by province or territory we've done that we've just clicked onto that and so we are here and these are all learning institutions in british columbia okay and what you can see from here is that um there are actually some titles onto it so here we have name of institution and then we have designated learning institution number dli and then we got city and then we have whether it offers postgraduate work permit eligible programs okay so when you are here you can just check the universities or colleges so arv canada college that's their dli number the city is richmond and it does not offer postgraduate work permit so this says no so same applies to all this academy of learning college abbotsford no so you just look at this column here and you can see all these institutions here are not offering postgraduate work permit once you are done with your studies but you can see acadia college that's their dli number and it's in langley city Yes, they do offer postgraduate work permit, but again, they do have details which you need to check, okay? And so we come to the next, and we have Adler University in Vancouver City. And yes, it offers postgraduate work permit, but again, it has details. So the rest of these institutions are not offering postgraduate work permit after studies. And so we move on to the next one. We have British Columbia Institute of Technology. That's the DLI number. It's in this city, Burnaby, North Vancouver, Richmond, and Vancouver. That's uh, different cities where they are located and then yes they are offering postgraduate work permit and there are no details for them meaning if you go study in this institution this particular one you can go and take any program or any course that you wish but if you find an institution like this one like this one alexander college in Burnaby, Vancouver, which offers postgraduate work permit after studies, but it has details. You need to check on those details because not all courses you'll take from this university will allow you to get a postgraduate work permit. So what we get here is you are eligible for a postgraduate work permit if you complete one of the degrees below and you meet all other postgraduate work permit criteria. So you need to take Associate of Arts and Associate of Science. You are not eligible if you complete any other program at this school so you need to really keep that in mind that if you find an institution which has details in it it means you cannot take all the programs that they are offering but you can only take specific ones so let's check out nova scotia so this is nova scotia and uh, academy of cosmetology does not offer postgraduate work permit once you're done studying but acadia university does and it doesn't have any details meaning in this institution you can go ahead and register for any program same goes for atlantic school of theology you can go become a pastor and start praying for people and let's check out what's here we have nova scotia community college yes they do offer postgraduate work permit and of course you can go for any course and then there's these other ones here the language center at saint mary's university university saint anne and university of king's college you can take any programs from these institutions but the ones which say no are a no go zone unless you're a canadian and you're just going to school for leisure then it doesn't really matter which institution you're going to study into because after all all you're looking for is just certification and start pushing on for your career but if you are like some of us who are trying to immigrate to canada as students then you need to be very particular on which institution you're going to join all right so that is just about it i've shown 
do and then another thing i had mentioned is that there is a list of those with approved rona readiness plan so once you've gotten your institution you've gotten a designated learning institution you also need to come and click on this link here and find out if your designated learning institution is ready or is approved to take international students so many details going on there you can check i'll share the links with you guys down below after you are done watching this video so that is just about it finding a designated learning institution and making sure that your institution is actually eligible to start accepting international students during this pandemic time but otherwise if it was not for pandemic then any learning institution should be okay all right but for this time this specific period the Canadian government is going step by step and approving designated learning institutions to take international students as soon as they are inspected and they're deemed to be ready and capable of accepting international students. So that's all I wanted you guys to learn from this video. I hope you've gotten one or two. If there's anything you are not sure of, any particular thing, please be sure to comment down below and I'll be able to respond to you as soon as I can. I'm not saying immediately, but as soon as I can, at least within 24 hours. Yes. So again, like always, angels, it's positive vibes only. And I'll see you all in the next video.